Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factor. Last episode we went ahead and implemented Hilt in this multi-module project here. We are now injecting a KTOR client, which is our networking layer, our network client here, uh, into our main activity to take a step closer towards, you know, better architecture. And in this episode we're going to continue on that trend. By enhancing our character detail screen composable, what we see here on screen in the emulator, uh, to be a little bit better architected, so to speak, right? We currently are, have the KTOR client, and then we have a parameter here, an argument basically that we need, right? What the character ID is, and then a little on click for some uh, user interaction at the bottom of the screen. But if we take a closer look here, we have a character, we have character data points, a list of these data point objects, and we are launching a coroutine here upon coming to this screen to actually do the networking, getting the character, handling the success, doing nothing on failure, etc. And then our lazy column down here is just, you know, building the entire screen that we see on the emulator uh, with all of that content. So we're going to go ahead and uplift this here to more of a familiar pattern, flow, MVVM, all that kind of good stuff here. And we'll just uh, go ahead and jump right into it. So smash that like button as we get started here. Two things we're going to need here is we're going to need the view model. I'm just going to go ahead and build them out in here so that we can just see everything in one file and we'll break it out later. We're going to at inject our constructor because we're going to have some classes that we need inside of there. We're going to leverage Hilt. We're simply just going to have this extend our view model and then we will fill this out in a little bit. Above this here, we are also going to need our character details. Well, it's not really a character details. It's more just a character uh, repository. So we're just going to create a character repository. We're going to add inject our constructor. And here is where we're going to have our networking information, uh, you know, our networking helpers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, stored in this repository in this layer, right? Because that's the common practice. We have our UI here, we have a view model, we have a repository, we want the networking to happen in the repository, we want the view model to hold the state from all of that networking, and then we are going to bubble that all out to the screen, and we'll get to something that looks like this. So the last little bit here, as I mentioned, is our state. So I, I like using a sealed interface here, and you'll see why. I'm going to call this the character details view state. Now it's a little bit long, but it is what it is. We're going to now declare different ways to um, you know, describe the screen at different points. So three things come to mind, pretty classic. We have a loading state, we have an error state, and then we have a success state. So we're going to create an object here for our loading state, and then we're going to just simply extend the character details view state. We're going to have another data class here for the error situation. Let's go with a message here, which is a string. Again, that is going to extend our character details view state. And then the success case here is going to actually have uh, you know, mimic what we're doing here. So if we see, we have that character, we have the data points, and both of those pieces of information are our state. When the network call comes back, we have our character, we compute the list of data points, and that's how we actually, you know, generate this screen. Uh, in case you missed it, the data points here are just these different, uh, it's, it's just a representation to kind of get us to be able to build this UI here. So we have that kind of like title and description. And those are these little like, you know, elements that we see in the UI. So what we're going to do here in our success is we're going to declare that we need a character here. And then we also need our, uh, let's say character data points, which simply is going to be a list of data points. Let's go ahead and just clean this up real quick for you. Uh, and then of course, this is going to have to extend our character details view state. So what this paradigm done does this sealed interface, why I think it's so powerful is we can just say, Hey, this is the character details view state. And all of these are different instances of that view state. So when it comes time to actually declare the flow and, and different arguments that we need to pass around, we can just say we care for a flow of view states. And then inside of our screen, we can, um, we can have some kind of branching logic that says when it's loading, do this, when it's error, do this, when it's success, do that. And in these last two cases here, we have a message to display to the user. We have our data that we actually need to build the screen. So it's a very, very powerful way to, uh, you know, build what I like to call a data driven UI, uh, which just couples so nicely with compose. So I, I personally love this implementation here and this screen is a pretty good demonstration of it. So let's go ahead and work on our networking layer here. We're basically just going to bubble up what we do with how we interact with our KTOR client, right? So we have a suspend function. Let's call it uh, fetch character. This is going to 
take a character ID and we're going to return an API operation of character. Simply just going to say ktor client get character with our character ID. So I know I went ahead and just implemented a bunch here. And if you've been following, you may even following the series, you may understand what's happening here. And if you don't, let's just cover this really quickly. So a character repository or any bit of a repository in the classic MVVM architecture is meant to interact with your networking layer. A lot of times we're going to go ahead and interact with our retrofit client or all that kind of stuff. Instead, we've built out a ktor client that exists inside of here in a separate network module. That's where our multi-module architecture comes from. Inside of this KTOR client, we have a couple functions here. So we can get a character, we can get a single episode, we can get a bunch of episodes, etc. Uh, and so we're just leveraging that. So then we're just saying, here's our suspend function, fetch the character, here's the ID. And in this case, what I want to, why I renamed this file is that the character repository should be able to be reused, right? This repository is just responsible for fetching characters. And when we create an episode repository, that will be responsible for just fetching episodes. So then we kind of build these low level network building blocks that we can go ahead and use in all of our different screens. Now we're starting to get into more of a specific implementation, our character details view model, which is the view model that's going to fuel this screen here that we see in the emulator. So we're going to leverage this uh, character repository here inside of the constructor of this view model because we're going to need it for what we're going to be doing. We see here that we get that little annotation. We know that because we have at inject constructor in the last episode, we built out a way for the ktor client to be injected wherever we need it. All of this is now starting to come together with Hilt, a little bit of MVVM, and uh, hopefully having everything inside of this one file makes it a little bit easier for you guys to follow. If you made it this far in the video and you are appreciating the content here and the explanations, please let me know in the comments, smash that like button to help me out, and let's just continue on here. We're going to create a val. I'm gonna call this our internal storage flow. This is going to be a mutable state flow of this right here. And this type which is going to be our character uh, details view state. The default value here is going to be our loading state, right? So when this screen boots up, we obviously need to kind of display something to the user. Loading state makes a lot of sense. And now we're already seeing the power of uh, this sealed interface here where we're saying, hey, this state flow is of this type. Here's a specific implementation. Our screen is gonna know how to handle that. Everything is gonna come together perfectly. So then we're just simply going to have our state flow here. This is going to be the mutable, um, uh, sorry, the, the external facing one. So that's why the other one is called internal. And then we're simply just gonna call as state flow on this. And now if we check the type here, we have a state flow of the character details view state. State flow, not mutable state flow. So anyone external can only read from this flow. They do not get the privilege of writing to this flow like we do internally. All right, so now we actually have to make use of our character repository. Uh, sorry, we don't need a, wow, we don't need a suspend function. We're going to say, uh, let's just say fetch character for lack of a better term here. We're going to have our character ID. And now we're going to set this equal to our view model scope dot launch, just a little syntax that I like if you set the function equal to that, as opposed to having this inside of the function. I like it mainly because you don't need to indent your code a little bit more, but functionally it does the exact same thing. So then what we're going to do here is we're going to leverage that character repository. We're going to call fetch character with our character ID. And then thanks to our functional programming you know, functions that we've added in, the on success and on failure, we can very easily just chain this stuff together. And now we have our character inside of this block here, as we see it in the little tooltip. And then in the on failure, we have our exception here, and we have all the relevant information that we need in the different blocks to actually go ahead and update our state here. So let's go ahead and uh, do that for this the failure case because it's a little bit easier. So we're going to say internal storage flow, we're going to call the update. Now what we're going to have to do in the update block is return a specific uh, details view state. So we're going to say return at it. We're going to say the character details view state dot error. And the message here is going to be name this exception dot message. And if that is null, let's go with an unknown, something like that. Perfect. So on failure, this is going to be our state. And in the on success, there's one little bit of information that we need to do here. I'm just going to copy this from uh, the current implementation. And we're just going to say our data points here 
is going to be equal to the build list function. I'm gonna go ahead and rename the it parameter to be character. There was some null checking going on because we weren't complete in the last implementation, but now we don't need that because we know in our on success block, we're going to have a non-null character, right? That's the power of some of that functional programming. We're gonna go ahead and do something quite similar to this over here. Instead of an error, we're going to create the success state. And then this is gonna change quite a bit. We're just going to say our character equals our character. And then where is it? Our character data points equal the data points that we've created up here. All right, perfect. And that's about it, right? We are just updating in the success state. We are updating in the failure state. This thing has, uh, where is it? This thing is a loading state in the very beginning. However, one thing that we can do as a reasonable you know, addition here is we could just internal uh, we can say update this and we'll return the loading uh, as an option there. So basically right before we do our networking, because that's happening inside of the repository here, we're just going to update again, no matter what that flow has, we're gonna update to the loading state. Let's just imagine if you were in the error situation and we were displaying this message on screen, maybe we put in a button that says retry. Well, when we do that, we're gonna want the screen to go ahead and update into the loading state to give the user that feedback that, hey, we are actually doing something. And then uh, you know the state would update and we would handle it from that. Okay, and that's basically about it for our view model implementation. Let's go ahead and bounce into the actual screen here. And this gets a lot nicer because we don't need the actual KTOR client, which is fantastic. So we're gonna remove that. We're going to keep the character ID because we obviously need that. And then we're simply just going to add in our view model here. And we're going to leverage the Android X lifecycle view model compose view model. And all right, I went ahead and just imported it for us. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, let's see, okay. So we're gonna get rid of all this because that's inside of our view model now. We're gonna get rid of almost all of this. We're just gonna get rid of all this. Let's change that to uh, view model dot fetch character with our character ID that's passed in. Wonderful, so this gets much simpler. Let's go ahead and remove this, let's clean it up as we go. And then we are gonna run into a little bit of an issue here because obviously we need all that information. But uh, the power of that different sealed interface allows us to create a very simple, uh, oh, <laughs> we don't have a state. It will allow us to create a very simple when statement to go ahead and render our UI. So the one thing that we're gonna need here is we're going to need a, uh, a state. We're gonna say by view model state flow, uh, collect as state. It's really that simple. So we're just gonna be getting everything that's emitted to that flow, fantastic. So we can say when our state, we'll add in the remaining branches here because we wanna have everything. Simply in the loading situation, it's going to look like this. So we'll copy and paste that for the loading state. The error state we need to, to do if we wanna implement that. And then our success state here is going to basically be all of this other stuff uh, that we have here. So let's just go ahead and copy all of this cut that out, we don't need that anymore, and then we do need that. All right, and then we'll notice here that we obviously don't have the character information, we don't have the character data points here, um, you know, at this point either, because that was all stored inside of this composable, now it's inside of our state, right? And so ideally, what we would like to do is say state.character, state.datapoints, but you'll see it's slightly grayed out, we go ahead and look at it, hit enter. The uh, smart cast here is impossible because uh, you know th something could change under the hood. So what we can go ahead and do here is change it, change this when statement to say when or val uh, view state equals our state. And then we can just reference uh, our view state here. We can reference the character. So basically we're saving the snapshot of the state when this code runs. So it's no longer mutable because it's stored in a val named view state. So then when we're evaluating that view state to be any of these different types, we can then safely reference any of the content within it. So in the case that it is success, it knows that there is a character because in order to create a success state, you need to supply a character and the data points. Similarly for the error, we would have ran into the same problem here, but now it knows that the message must exist because of the way we've declared these data classes and all that kind of stuff.
So just a quick little change there to make our lives a little easier. And let's just go ahead. So we can go ahead and reference this. So anytime we see character, we're just gonna paste in the view state character. We obviously don't need the non-null. Uh, which is fantastic. So we'll just clean all this up. All right. And then we have our character data points here. So we're just simply going to say character data points, and then we'll add all of them in. And that's about it, right? We just kind of cleaned all that stuff up. Let's see the one place we're going to have to change things is inside of our main activity because we were passing in the KTOR client, but we just simply don't need that anymore. We now have our character ID. This is the callback here when you click on a particular button, the one all the way down here and the view all episodes uh, button. And other than that, we're ready to go here. So let's go ahead and rerun this and let's see if our implementation works. All right, folks, so I know that was instantaneous for you, but it was about 10 minutes on my side. If we take a look here in the logcat, we have actually run into a runtime exception. The app was crashing immediately and it says cannot create an instance of this particular view model. And what I noticed was, uh, or what I, what I came to find out, was that we were just simply calling view model here. Instead, we actually needed to call hilt view model. Now, this is my first project where I've actually gone ahead and created, uh, you know, the nav controller with, uh, you know, compose and navigation here. So yeah, when we do compose navigation, everybody, you need to add in <laughs> this additional library here called Hilt Navigation Compose. Right now, 1.1 is the latest version. And instead of injecting view model for your character detail screen or any of your composables that are a part of this nav host, you actually need to initialize them by calling Hilt View Model. Everything else worked exactly the same. I didn't change any of the other code here. We'll see it all here. All this code is available on GitHub, so you can go ahead and pull it down yourself. But our repository, the view model, nothing else really needed to change. Actually, I forgot this annotation here, the at hilt view model on our view model, but that's all that there was to it. No functional changes, just fighting with hilt a tiny bit here. So we have the annotation and then we have to say equals hilt view model instead of regular view model and everything else uh, just, you know, worked as is. If you don't believe me, I'll go ahead and rerun things here. We'll see the emulator boot up. We see our loading state there, and then we go ahead and get the screen back to where it was before. So thank you so much for following along. If you made it this far in the video, please smash the like button. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We really did a whole lot here. We have our detail screen implementing an actual view model. We have that view model managing a state under the hood here with this flow. We are observing that flow inside of our composable. We have this reusable building block of the character repository to make different network calls to fetch a character or character in the future, we're going to fetch multiple characters or pages of characters so that we can actually uh, build the rest of this app out. That's all going to live in the repository here. We can reuse that. We can add that functionality wherever we want. We'll create other repositories to implement other kinds of networking operations here. And realistically, this function or sorry, this view model was just one function here. Right? We handle it a couple different ways. We handle the on success, we handle the on failure. If you wanted to clean it up, you can break this out into its own function, no problem. Uh, similarly here, but you know, it's not the end of the world. We have our quick, clean, sealed interface that declaring the uh, view state here in such a way here with our loading error and success states really allows for this beautiful bit of code to just come and drive the entire screen. So this is uh, super powerful. This is the way I like to build some things in Compose. Let me know if this is um, you know, your preferred way as well. I think it is, uh, stands the test of time here quite well. And then obviously we need to kick off our networking in the very beginning. And that's about it, folks. That's all I got for you. I'll see you in the next one. I may uh, you know, just pull these files out into their own, uh, you know, or these classes out into their own file. Uh, but other than that, all the content is there. Download everything on GitHub if you're interested in it. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.